Hello all Indoors TV viewers. Today I'm here with analyst Anton Damstein to discuss MGA's Q1 report. Hello Anton and welcome. Thank you. So MGA's result was quite mixed with lower revenue but higher adjusted EBITDA than we expected. What does this mean for the company now going forward? Yeah, so I think it means that this year we will see a lower growth. Uh, with the expectation then that things will improve next year and after that then we will see MJ get back to sort of higher growth again. Uh, as it comes for the profitability, uh, we see that uh, their efforts to consolidate their tech stack together with uh, closing some of their older games last year did result in cost savings. Uh, and that was of course encouraging to see, I guess in this case we had higher profitability but even sort of maintaining your profitability and a lower growth is a good sign. Yeah. And then uh, this was the first time they guided the full year for 2023. And uh, how did the guidance look to you? What was it? How, what's your feeling about it? I think it seems reasonable. Uh, I think it's still fair to say that sort of the outlook for the whole year is a bit uh, limited when it comes to the whole, whole ad spending uh, market. Uh, so, of course, things could turn out better or worse. Uh, I think MGI has been pretty pretty conservative with their guidance in previous years. So I think unless the entire market turns for the worse, uh, I think uh, it's reasonable to assume that they will uh, hit their guidance. Okay, that sounds good. And then your own expectation in the medium and longer term is quite positive. So what are the possible threats of that not materializing? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, over the medium term, so say 2024, 2025, 2026, we have uh, a reasonable uh, uh, revenue estimate that's uh, close to 10%. Um, and when after that, then we start to taper off both growth and profitability. Uh, I would see that the biggest threat uh, is not materializing uh, is that we have sort of, uh, if we if we have gone through sort of a structural change in the programmatic ad market where this lower growth would be sort of permanent or at least over, over the, or last, let's say, a couple of years. Um, but uh, I guess there's not really any signs of that now, but um, I think that would be the biggest threat. Okay. And then uh, finally, the you said in the, your report that the valuation difference between MJ and its peers at certain points seems a bit unreasonable. So in your opinion, what would be a more reasonable difference between the valuations or how should either MJ's or the peers valuation change to make it more reasonable? Yeah, uh, I think here it's uh, it's sort of good to take a look at at all of the peers. I think they're a little bit split between some are very uh, have a very low valuation. Usually, it's companies that have a new strategic initiative or or just otherwise doing not so great. Then we have a couple of other companies that are trading at very high multiples. So there, I think we we've talked about that we feel that MGI might deserve a little bit of discount compared, especially to these high performing ones that have a longer track record. Um, However, I think at this point, uh, it's extremely wide now because MGI is very lowly evaluated, but then you have other companies extremely high. So maybe a more reasonable would be for them sort of meet in the middle. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.